Hey folks, welcome to another Boats and Bits. In this episode, I am going to cover this Igu uh, Android car media player. Now, you wonder why I am showing a car radio on a boat channel. However, I'm sure like most people, I have uh, the previous owner has put a car radio in. Uh, I thought this would be a brilliant upgrade. Reason being is it has Android. Now, it doesn't look like much at the minute, but if we go like this here, voila, we have a mini screen. Um, so I think it's about seven inch. And if we go here, um, you can see then we've got Android. So if we could click that, it gives you all the apps. Uh, you can see that, yep. So we've got Bluetooth and all that cool stuff. We actually have a wee GPS puck, and I'll go through all that stuff in a minute. Um, so we've got YouTube, Spotify, all the type of stuff. Um, and we've got a couple of boating ones. So we've an anchor alarm, uh, OpenCPN, and Navionics. So, I'll just give a quick overview of what you actually get. So this just slides down like that there and it goes away to the next to nothing. Uh, it comes with GPS, uh, it comes with a camera. This one I bought anyway, comes with a camera. The plan I thought was if you have a camera up the front of your boat, then you'd be able to watch it on the wee screen in your cabin. Uh, just as a kind of bit of a look out if you were down below for whatever reason. Um, it also has a couple of other things like a, obviously your, your car radio antenna. Um, GPS, uh, the video for your camera input. You've got a load of these here things. So it's basically like uh, video in, um, audio out, auxiliary. So it's all your different audio slots and then your standard uh, car radio. So you wire this into like your wee loom. Uh, at the minute I've just wired in here to my 12 volt power supply just for the testing. So once I get in the boat, like wired up properly. Um, so let's go and have a look at what apps there are uh. yeah so let's just see some of the apps that you can actually download uh, this is android so you obviously you can download these on your tablet or your phone but i just thought that these would be useful ones to, for you in your cabin on your boat uh, first of all uh, anchor alarm i would imagine this would be very useful uh, if i hit start i'll show you how it works so basically if you're dragging your anchor you can kind of see that this will sound an alarm if you go past your designated distance um, very straightforward but very useful uh, that's free app and let's look at the next one oh. windy again probably doesn't need any self ex explanation um, it is for predicting or it shows the weather and um, so you can go on here and see wind patterns and stuff like that there um, so if we look through the next few days not a lot of wind and then there's going to be more and we can see forecast for this location which then shows us the weather. So yes, it's going to be quite windy. Uh, as we can see there, for Sar up to Saturday, and then going to be not too bad on Sunday. So we go back, let's have a flick through again. So that's windy, not 3D. If you're anything like me, remember knots is a bit of a struggle. So you go on here, boating, and you've got a list of all your, so there's the bow line. Bow line. So this gives you an uh, illustration of how, how to tie it. And then it tells you other knots that are similar. So you can go on but more knots than you'll ever need. Uh, and a useful diagram and all the rest. So great way up again free. Uh, so let's go back. Uh, tides, again, self-explanatory. Um, this basically tells you the tides where you are at the minute. It uses the GPS whenever it logs on. Uh, so it says I'm in London, which I'm not obviously, but yeah, for the sake of argument, um, we can change the settings. So if you take a look there at Banger, so we'll view Banger for. Oh, an advert. No, I don't want to install TikTok clues, please. Um, so that's actually the first one, sorry, is this, so we can see there. So we can change the date. So you can go and change your, your location and things like that there as well. There's Belfast. So yeah, and we can go and check other times and whatnot. So let's go back. So we want to get out of that. So that's our tides. Novelty, that's kind of like a generic one. Uh, I was looking at this here earlier. Um, it basically is like a user submitted anchorages and things like that here. So if we take a look at this one, it's Clocky Bay. And if we load it up, and you can actually see people do images and then it shows you things like 
um, it gives you more information if you scroll if, you, if we click view yeah so if you things it goes down with warning so it says anger is authorized uh, no warning in this so it's basically people can say if there's issues or stuff um, and then here it gives sort of scores and, and where's sheltered and things like that there and then the seabed reachable by dinghy and where you can get in so quite useful uh, and it's a free one as well there is some premium features but for this here most of it's free uh, if we go across now again, uh, we're back onto the Navionics, uh, which is a paid app. And um, now you pay, <coughs> I have this on my phone, but obviously you can use it in two devices with the license. So I'd potentially use it in this device. So if we load it up, it uh, should just come up with that familiar map. Um, I'm sure many of you have used Navionics. Um, obviously, it's got GPS as well, so that we can actually use it as a chart plotter. Um, and there's a few other apps like that as well. Uh, Aqua Maps, very similar to Navionics. Uh, I think it allows five devices, so that would probably be the benefit. I uh, haven't used it out in the water. Uh, I have purchased a Navionics license, but I have heard others using it. There is some benefits, especially with data and stuff. It does display more data types and like wind and things like that there, whereas uh, Navionics doesn't. Uh, let's scoot across again. Uh, OpenCPN, fairly obvious one. Um, you can run that on there as well. It's paid on Android. Uh, it is open source, of course, but yeah. And fact, last but not least is one I've written myself, or it's currently in beta. Um, there's a few few issues that have come up, especially in testing this here. So we click here, it's called Body Control. And what it does is connect to basically a wee box hardware project I've done. Um, and I'm sure if you've looked at the other videos, you may have seen it. Um, but if I do start scan, what this actually does is connect uh, to Raymarine autopilots, so you can actually, or, or Raymarine data systems. So if we connect here and it should come up. So what we can actually see is the data display. So that if we had our CTOC going, obviously I have an uh, emulator run and everything's zero at the minute. Um, but if I had wind or ST60 devices, that would actually show the data. Um, what it also does is the autopilot. So we, the buttons are a bit screwed up and I need to fix that. Um, but you can kind of see the, the buttons that would be on your autopilot. Uh, if we take a look over here, uh, you shall see my autopilot. So if I hit auto on the screen and I've hit man overboard, so if I hit man overboard cancel. So if I hit auto, you'll see A has come up there. And if I do minus one, you can see I'm moving it. Uh, and then I can put it back into standby. Yep, it's been a long one this week. Um, there's not really much you can say. It's an Android device. Uh, I'm sure everybody has an Android phone or Android tablet. Probably use them in the boat as well. Um, I know I use Navionics, so having this as a backup, even down in the cabin, is quite useful. Uh, going to be interesting to see about the camera and stuff like that there, if we can put that to use. Um, but yeah, even just as a radio, it looks like it's got more functions. My radio doesn't, in the book doesn't have DAB, for example. Um, you can also watch movies and things like that there. So for 60 quid, I think it's a bit of an upgrade. Um, obviously, the useful things like the anchor alarm. Um, be interested to hear what apps you run on your Android device, if you want to stick a comment down below of those. I'll stick a link to this device down below as well. Um, it isn't the cheapest one. I'll, I'll hopefully be able to there's like three or four in the same listing. It's the four gigabyte uh, quad core, um, which is a bit more responsive on the scroll and things like that there. The touch screen's really good. So it's not sort of like the older where it's like resistive. So it's actually like your proper tablet. Um, not waterproof, so I wouldn't be using it outside the, in the, in the cockpit. Um, but certainly in the cabin, it'll do, do its job. Um, for 60 quid is a bit of a bargain. Um, again, stick the links down below. And if you wish to be, support the channel, like and subscribe is free and be greatly appreciated. And hopefully see you all again soon. All right. Thanks. Cheers. Bye.